There are a lot of mods for Fallout 4. Too many for me to cover on this channel, as you probably guess, I don't cover every single new release. But in addition, some of them I probably should have covered, and that's really going to be the purpose of this video. I'm going to be showing you eight lesser known mods, a few of these I have covered, but like a long time ago, but all of them kind of, I think, just deserve a little bit more attention. They're mods that I looked at and either forgot about or just never saw before, and I was like, you know what? Yeah, like I would use that in my game. It should be in my game. A few of these just were kind of older, so maybe they came out a while ago, but are still super relevant right now and still things that are worth a download, but naturally as people change their load order or reset their system, some of those older mods do not get as much attention as newer ones, but they don't necessarily not deserve that attention. In addition, some of these other ones just weren't catchy enough with the titles or something like that, and people just didn't click on them and they just didn't get enough attention naturally. Either way, today I'm showing you eight lesser known mods for Fallout 4. If you guys do enjoy the video, you could leave a like or a comment that helps with YouTube's internal rating system so this video will be promoted to more people. But otherwise, just enjoy the video and everything I do show you will be linked down below. Kick things off with the Portable Junk Recycler. This is definitely going to be one of the simplest mods on this list, but it's something actually really useful nonetheless. If you played through Fallout 4, you obviously know you do pick up junk. It's an integral part of this Fallout because of the settlement system and weapon crafting and things like that. Well, as you do accumulate this junk, you're going to realize as it's in your inventory, it's kind of in its raw form. Until you actually use it to craft something or store it in your settlement inventory, you kind of just have, you know, like the wrench that it once was. Well, what this portable junk recycler is going to do is add in a new item that you can deposit items into and you'll get their actual individual junk makeups. So you can turn cleaner into acid and antibiotics or something rather than having that cleaner and it actually weighs a lot more in its original form. So after you break this stuff down, you'll probably have less carry weight and all around is just more convenient. It's very easy and simple mod to use. You could hotkey it and it honestly does clean up your inventory so you could just see how much of each individual item you have rather than those larger, not broken down versions. So this one's basically cheating, but I actually kind of like this. It's called the Spawn Settler Button, and as you could probably guess, it allows you to place down a button in settlement mode, and when you click it, it'll spawn in one new settler. I really like this for one main reason. A lot of people nowadays use Start Me Up while playing Fallout 4. If you watch my live stream, I actually started at level 10, I think it was, and that was because I didn't want to go through that earlier levels where you have to build everything up. It's just not fun after doing it so many times. It's just tedious. Unfortunately, with the settlement mode, you still have to wait and painstakingly wait for more settlers to come, and it takes a while. Trying to build up those initial settlements is always very annoying, and this is a great alternative to do that. Maybe you start a settlement and just spawn in three or four settlers right off the bat just to get things going. I'm sure there's some people that abuse this. I'm sure there's some people that'll just make this to kind of have a fun, large growing settlement, which with some settlements, that's probably something a lot of you guys would want to do. Either way, I never knew this mod existed. Spawning in settlers through console commands is actually really annoying because you can only use certain ones and sometimes it doesn't work. The way this mod works is basically triggers it through the recruitment beacon. So it'll be randomized. If you have any other mods editing settlers, it'll work fine with this. And it's really just a quality of life mod more than anything else. Then we do have Junk Town. This is going to be kind of similar to some of the other more popular mods out there, but it's going to be way lighter. There's other mods like Spring Cleaning that allow you to scrap everything and anything all over the Commonwealth and in your settlements. This mod's really going to be more focused around some of the garbage that do plague those settlements, as well as some of the different objects that kind of surround them, like trees and stuff. So right off the bat, some of those objects you're going to be able to move around in addition to just scrapping. So if you want those trees, you just don't want them right there, or they're like cutting off one of your settlements. You can move them around a bit rather than just scrapping them. In addition, you can again just get rid of some of that garbage. It can make your settlements look a lot cleaner, especially again if you're using something like sim settlements and you know your settlements kind of meant to be built up. It's not meant to look like a dump all the time. Again, this mod is lighter weight, so it's a small file size as well as it's not as taxing on the game. But at the same time, it really did everything I wanted it to do and it wasn't as expansive as spring cleaning, but in a good way. This one's actually pretty cool. VAFS is going to be the vault Tech Accelerated Focus System. Some of you guys may have actually known about this. It's going to be a bullet time mod, but a kind of better bullet time mod. There's one mod called Bullet Time that a lot of people download and love, but I feel like this one's actually a little bit better. So this mod has a couple components. First and foremost, there's going to be an item that you can hotkey. As you click it, you will enter into bullet time, which basically slows down time, very similar to Jet in Fallout 4. A lot of people view this as like a VATS alternative, and basically while you're in this mode, your AP will drain just in general, and in addition, as you take individual shots, depending on the weapon, it will drain your AP in little chunks. As you switch different weapons, it'll actually tell you how much AP drain that certain weapon will use, so a shotgun uses more than a pistol, or an SMG, or a rifle. But in addition, there's actually another hotkeyable item, and that's going to be the crit meter. So as you do take down enemies, and as you kind of see in the middle of my screen right now, 
Shooting enemies just naturally will fill up your crit meter. You don't have to be in bullet time or have to be in vats to use this. Then, after filling up your crit meter, you actually can go back into this bullet time mode and use a crit, but you actually have to hit the enemies now. Makes it a little bit harder, but at the same time, it's a little bit easier to fill this meter, so I feel like it's kind of balanced well in that sense. That's all cool, and there's other mods that do that. Where this mod really comes in handy, or where I think it really stands out, is in its additions to other aspects of the game. This actually overhauls all of the various perks that apply to VATS to make it compatible with this mod. And to be clear, this doesn't remove VATS. You can use VATS with this mod, and all those perks do still benefit VATS, but they also add benefits for this. So things like the Mysterious Stranger perk are applicable with this bullet time. He may appear after you enter bullet time to help you out. I'm not going to go through each individual one, but even like some of the companion perks that do affect VATS are modified and overhauled to actually work with this bullet time also. It really seems like this mod author thought everything through, and this is like a fully functional integration into Fallout 4. I think I actually might use this on my regular game. It's really well done, and I feel like it's not getting nearly enough attention, especially when compared to some of its alternatives. This is a super simple one, I showed you guys it in a video a long time ago, but during my live streams and things like that, I get questions about it all the time. Vendors have mods, make it so, as you could guess, vendors carry mods for different weapons in the game. So now as you do, go to whatever vendor and you shop from them, you will find mods for your favorite weapons and some of your less favorite ones. It's going to work like the natural levelless integration system, you have to reset, they'll refresh every couple days, things like that. But this is really cool because you can kind of live a more on the go lifestyle if you don't want to focus on weapon crafting and having to dump valuable perk points into those specific perk trees then you can use this mod you can just go wait and try and shop around for some of those mods for your weapons that's particularly true at early levels in the game this is one that i've been using for quite a while now again i've gotten a ton of questions about it it's something that honestly should have been in the base game i don't know why it isn't fortunately this mod adds it in and i think it adds it in in a great way then we do have the DLC Leveledless Integration. This is going to be pretty similar to the last one, but not at the same time. Fairly straightforward, more or less some of those new weapons added in by the Nuka World and Far Harbor DLCs are really cool, unique, and interesting, but they don't appear in the Commonwealth. This mod's going to make it so it's integrated into the Leveledless of the Super Mutants, Raiders, Minutemen, etc, etc. As you can see here, there's a bunch of raiders on this ship that do have lever action rifles. That's something they otherwise would not be able to carry because you'd only find those in Nuka World. It really doesn't make as much sense to me. It actually does a great job at changing up the feel of the commonwealth. Even though you're familiar with these weapons, it's kind of jarring to find them on your traditional raiders because you're so not used to seeing it. You only see them in Nuka World. It's another super simple one, something that I would have loved to see in the base game. I kind of understand more why this wasn't in it, but again, it just kind of freshens up the weapon system and the level list of your enemies. So this is actually a big one I never knew about, but I'm probably going to start using. It's called Adrenaline Rush. So if you play through survival, there's a system of adrenaline, more or less. As you do kill enemies, you will get an adrenaline boost, and what that means is you'll deal more damage overall. This is a vanilla Fallout 4 feature, but the way it's supposed to work is, after you die, your adrenaline is reset. Except many people, myself included, play survival mode with autosave enabled using a different mod. Well, due to this, after you autosave or quicksave, after respawning, you actually have your adrenaline still. It doesn't work in the way it's originally intended to, so you can get some seriously overpowered effects, such as doing like 60% increased damage all of the time, which is a lot. In my playthroughs, it pretty much just made it so I could one-shot most enemies with a pretty decent rifle. Adrenaline Rush is actually going to change the adrenaline function, now it's going to just taper off after a certain amount of time. After you kill certain enemies, you reach different levels and bonuses of adrenaline, so 5%, 10%, 20%. With this mod, just after a certain amount of time passes, you'll de-level if you don't continue to be in combat. Kind of makes more sense, I mean, after fighting a bunch of enemies, you're probably only going to have adrenaline for a short while, it's not going to be everlasting like it is in vanilla Fallout 4. It's a balance change, it's definitely going to make the game harder if you play in survival with autosave or quicksave, but at the same time, I feel like it just makes things a little bit more fair. Now last but not least we have BS Defense. What this is going to do is basically make the defense system in Fallout 4 work the way you probably think it does. So obviously settlements get attacked in Fallout 4, it's typically pretty gimmicky, but you always have to go help them. There's actually a system in Fallout 4 that no matter your defense number, so you could have a thousand defense hypothetically, the settlers will still lose automatically. After a certain point the defense is capped internally, so it doesn't really matter if you keep placing down turrets, if you don't go there the settlers will always lose. This can change that and make it so it actually works like your defense number is representative of how likely they are to win that, so if you place down just a boatload of turrets, they will actually protect your settlement. Again, this is another quality of life one, if you haven't downloaded it already, it's just a great one to keep permanently in your load order because, you know, that's the way most people think it works. I guess the reason Bethesda didn't include this naturally is because they wanted you to go back and forth to your settlements, but I'm not really a fan of that, so we're going to download this mod. 
So that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video, but as always with my videos, I'm going to end them off with a psych fun fact of the day. Today is actually going to be about human memory. Something really interesting that I learned in one of my classes was that the testing effect, or what the testing effect is. So basically, intuitively, you would think that, all right, as you do and want to study, the best way to study is actually to read over the material and study it repeatedly day after day. It's actually not true. The best way to learn material is to study it once and then have repeated tests on it. So they actually did two comparisons. Basically, it was eight days in a row and one group had seven days of studying. Another group had one day of studying and then seven days of testing. After you took the test, invariably on the earlier ones, the testing group did really bad on the first few, but they got the right answers after the fact and then they went home for the day. There was no more studying. All you did was take a test, get the correct answers, and then go home and not study anymore and do the same thing over and over. Well, at the end, the testing group actually did significantly better to the point where really the best way to study nowadays, and this is actually super useful if you're a student, is flashcards and testing yourself. Like taking a piece of paper and just reading it over and over, although it makes you feel like you know the information better, you actually don't. You will typically perform worse, at least that's what studies say. So testing yourself with whether it be flashcards or actually creating fake tests, which does anyone actually do that? I don't do that. But flashcards specifically is one of the best ways to study, at least from a human memory perspective, if you want to remember that information. In addition, if you guys enjoyed this video, I had another video come out a few weeks ago on 10 quality of life mods. It's in a similar vein to this, fairly simple mods that you may have not downloaded but actually make the game just a lot more enjoyable. You can click on screen right now to take you to that, but otherwise, as always, again, I thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you all next time. Later!